Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing how you can complete any layer of sub items in one click. In a previous video, I basically showed you how you can complete a parent task to mark a sub item task automatically as done, as you can see in this automation on the screen. But when we go and look a little deeper, the sub item after that is not complete. And if we look again, the sub item under that is also incomplete. And if we want to go even further, the fourth layer of sub item is also marked out. Well, I don't recommend that you have this many layers of sub items in any tab. I'll show you how you can create a simple database automation that allows you to complete any layer of sub items in one click. Obviously, changing a status requires two clicks, but if we change the button to mark as done, we can obviously get everything done in one click. You can check out my other video here at the top of the screen, and I'll just briefly go over the logic that I I used in that video. I basically created a formula to verify that the sub item was not empty and then to only mark it as complete if the number of sub items related to the parent task was equal to the number of sub items that were marked as done. And so for one layer of parent and sub items this works great and we basically just use this simple automation where we're going to define the variable as a sub item and then mark it as done. But in this one I'll configure it so that we can complete any layer of sub items, even if it's four layers, five layers, six layers deep. Let's get started. We're basically going to use a similar logic to the completion formula that we started, but we want to go two layers deep this time. We also want to create a circular logic system so that once it checks for two layers of sub items, let's also check for two layers of parent items, and then we kind of work in a circular motion and take advantage of the database automations that way. Another way to look at this automation logic is like this. We're going to create two formulas and we're going to nest them within each other so that we can verify that two layers of sub items are marked as complete and then also the two layers of parent items are also complete. As you can imagine in this visual, we're going to start with the left side to verify that all sub items are complete first and then after that to create a formula that nests that formula output with the parent item equivalent. So in order to create two layers of mapped sub items, this has been a common question that I've received in past videos. We're going to need to use the let's formula. I'm going to title the first layer layer one, and this is just going to be the sub item of a task. And so layer two just basically uses that variable that we defined and then maps the sub items based on that variable. So it's as simple as map layer one current dot sub item, close that up, add that comma, and then let's add layer two. I'm going to just click on done for now. And as you can see, layer two, it shows two layers of sub items. So for the parent item, two layers below that would be sub sub, two layers below the sub would be sub sub sub, as you can see here, and so on and so forth. This is a very simple way to create that double layered logic in case you need this for anything else you're working on in your Notion workspace. Now, we just have to verify, similar to our completion formula, that the length of these two layers of sub items is equal to the number of completed sub items as well. We have to add a little more logic here and say, instead of mapping the literal sub items, we can count the length, which is the number of sub items that exist. And then similarly, we can also verify whether they are filtered and marked as done. And say layer C, as in checking the layer, we can map it doing the similar logic layer one, but this time we want to just filter it. So dot filter current dot status double equal sign done. We want to add the current dot name. In this case, our current dot anything works because we're just measuring the number of entries that fit that criterion. So we're just going to close that up and then end that with dot length and then close that out with a comma. And again, this dot filter formula allows us to filter all the tasks in which the status equals done. And this can be incredibly helpful if you are not taking advantage of it already. And so we want to verify that layer two is equal to layer C and make sure that the length of sub items is equal to the length of completed sub items to create that check mark or completion equivalent. So we can do layer two is equal to layer C. And that's going to output a true or false value. And that's going to allow us to check if the number of completed sub items two layers deep is equal to the number of total sub items two layers deep as you can see in this simple let's formula. Now if we go to formula two, we can see this formula in action. As you can see, the last item has a checkbox, which we don't want, and that is because we haven't accounted for the fact that some sub items might be empty, which would be the very last sub item if we had several layers. And so we just have to include that ifs formula function where it's saying, if it's not empty, let's count those items. Otherwise, we don't want to count them at all. I'm just going to add this ifs formula logic to say only if the sub item is not empty, are we going to count the length? Otherwise, 
it's going to be nothing. So we can click on done and remove that logic for that last one where there's no sub items that exist. At the very top now, it says this is complete. And the reason why this is saying it's complete is because there's only one sub item and it's complete. So if I added another sub item, that's going to remove itself simply because there's two sub items that exist. Notice how that completion formula is removed. But if I delete this, that's going to come back because it only detects the one sub item as complete. Just want to make sure that logic is shared. And so we've created this very simple sub item for two layers deep using this nested formula where we define the sub item and then we use that defined sub item to find it, its sub item. So we have two layers of sub items identified through this form. And so going back to this formula automation logic, now we want to check for the parent item completion and initiate this circular checkpoint where every time we check for sub item completion at two layers deep, we also want to check for parent item completion for that sub item category to create that circular logic so that it can work for any layer of sub items. This might feel a little complicated at first, but trust me, by the end of this video, you should have an idea for why this works and why this circularity functions the way that it does. Now that we've created the sub item equivalent, we have to create the parent item equivalent. I'm going to create the parent item equivalent, but this time I'll just change the logic of what we've already created. So I'll just duplicate this for now and then modify from here. And what we can do is to reverse this process, we'll do parent item to replace that sub item. But in this case, because we're not accounting for the completion of sub items and just the nested output of sub items within the parent item category, we are just going to identify the parent items needed to check that sub item category. What we can do is just remove the ifs formula and then instead of length, we're gonna take the actual name of it and we're also gonna take the parent item of it as well. And so layer one is gonna be found as the parent item and then we're gonna take the parent item of that entry as well. And because it's an array we and we wanna isolate it to just one entry, we're gonna do dot first to take the very first entry within the parent item array and check for that sub item to see if the nested sub items two layers deep are complete. And so once we've identified the second layer of the parent item, we want to identify the sub item of that parent item. So I'm going to call this sub check. We're again going to map out what we already nested in layer two. I'm going to type in layer two, comma, current dot sub item, the formula as opposed to the actual relation. So we can do sub item two layers and then type in sub check to show that output. So now that we've verify that that formula works. Let's see what's going on here. In our case, the sub 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 item that's four layers deep is empty because parent item that's two layers higher than this fourth sub item is not done. In our case, for the sub 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 item, the same thing applies where two layers higher for that third sub item is still empty here. But now if we look at the sub sub item and we look at two layers deep here or two layers higher for the parent item, this is checked and so this is also checked. And so that's how that logic sort of works in circularity. We're basically referencing this logic based on this other logic and then seeing whether that is true or not. Now, in order to sort of make both these formula properties work together, we need to go a step further in terms of this parent item logic and then integrating it to our automation that we've already started. We want to basically say that if this sub item is true and or this parent item is true, then let's mark everything as complete. And we can do that by going to our automation here, editing this database, and then filtering it only by that status that we just created. So if this is checked, then let's mark that as complete. So let's see how that works and let's see how we can build upon it. So now when we mark this as done, let's see what happens. We got one layer of sub items past the original sub item complete. And as you can see, it was just filtering based on that parent item two layers as checked. And so that is because this is taking the information for the sub item and then using it to verify that the previous items are complete and then it's automating that completion. And so where it gets a little more interesting is when we want to complete the third set of sub items and the fourth set of sub items. And so it might seem counterintuitive, but again, similar to this logic that we've created, we can actually just duplicate the step within the automation to rinse and repeat this process. So if we want to take care of the third and fourth sub item completion steps, we just go back to our automation and all we actually really need to do is duplicate this step. So I'll just show you through one duplication and show you how that works. So I'm going to just change the status to not started for all of those 
items. I'm going to change parent task to done and let's see how that automation works. Notice how these checkboxes checked one at a time. And so there's this recursive formula layer to it or anything that is covered is marked as we just added the third layer of sub item completion through the duplication of that step and so as you can imagine you can just duplicate this step again click done change all the tasks to done and now when we click on done here we see all four layers of sub items get complete and so this is just an addition of that logic we created and now we've created this recursive sort of formula automation using these nested formula conditions and now we can complete any layer of sub items based on the number of these steps that we duplicate. So if we had 10 layers of sub items, this could still work as long as there's six other steps that we duplicate within this database formula automation. Hopefully that made sense and let me know how you are able to use this automation in your workspace. And maybe the logic here might've been a little confusing, but hopefully you got something out of this video and I'll see you in the next one.